Hey folks, Todd Colburn here with your Aerospace Structure Series. This lecture is on statics, and our first lecture is going to be broken into a, a number of small little pieces. This one will be on some of the most foundational concepts. So uh, before we get started, it helps us if we understand the backdrop of what we're actually talking about here. Statics falls under the category of what we call mechanics. Mechanics is a science that studies the relationships between force and matter and motion. We can say that this, the mechanics just de describes the conditions of rest and motion of bodies under the action of forces. This is the way Beeren Johnson's text defines it. The foundations of this study were laid by folks like Aristotle, Archimedes, Galileo, Kepler, Newton, and others. Often our statics books are called uh, vector mechanics for engineers because we're talking about mechanics and we're talking about those forces and the vectors and moments and things like this. So uh, to understand this, it helps us also to think about what kinds of things are we studying the action of these forces on. The first one is uh, rigid bodies, which means anything that we can pretend is so rigid that it doesn't deform at all under the action of the forces. Now, it, nearly everything deforms under the action of forces, but often if the forces are small relative to the rigidity of the element, or the element is rigid relative to the magnitude of the forces, we can treat these, and even if it's not, even if our member does deform, we can often start by pretending that it doesn't deform. This keeps the, keeps the analysis simpler. We can actually get some good approximations with less chance for error. I mean, we have known error because it's a gross approximation, but because our analysis is so simple, the chance of us making a, a mistake and adding to our error, astronomically due to ignorance, diminishes, which ends up being a little better answer. So rigid bodies are those that we're assuming are really rigid. And even if the structure isn't, we can often make this assumption first, evaluate it that way, and then go and look at the structure now with a uh, closer and closer eye to what really is going on. So rigid bodies are those that are assumed completely rigid. We're going to break this up into two, two types of studies of these rigid bodies, statics and dynamics. Statics will be for, for structures and machines and aircraft that are not moving, they're at rest. And when we say at rest, what we basically mean is we're not changing the motion of the thing. So it actually can be under velocity, but if that velocity doesn't change, we can treat it like and it's at rest. In fact, we can deal with many dynamic problems with a, in a static analysis with the simplifying assumptions of assuming that the net forces is zero. Dynamics is when the net forces aren't zero and we get accelerations, changes in velocity on the part. Okay, So both of these are dealing with rigid bodies. Um, so we have our statics class in, at Cal Poly, that's arrow 2041. And our dynamics class at Cal Poly, that's uh, arrow 2150. And uh, there are many, every university with engineering programs, these are the two fundamental classes for most engineering curriculums. And actually, if you can nail these classes, you're going to find out most of your classes are fairly easy by comparison with the exception of perhaps uh, fluids and thermodynamics, okay? Next, so we have rigid bodies. The next we have deformable bodies. Those are those that deform under the action of the forces. Now this actually causes things to get a lot more complicated, but, and we will deal with some of the simpler complications when we get into our structures one and our structures two classes. Okay, so we actually have bodies that do deform, but the deformations have a negligible effect on the equilibrium or the motion of the part. Okay, and a lot of things that uh, this is roughly true for. Once again, we're often going to start assuming it's rigid, then assume it's deformable, and then look at other higher assumptions if we need to.
And the third category is fluids. We have incompressible fluids and compressible fluids. Well, nearly everything is compressible if you pressure it enough. But often what we'll do is treat them as being incompressible for certain kinds of simple analysis, just like we treated things as being static. And then when we really want to get a better number, we'll start looking at the correct compressibility of the fluid. Okay, So fluids classes, we'll deal with some of those things. This class is going to be dealing with rigid static structures, ones where the motion is not uh, changing. Okay, We're going to have some uh, fundamental concepts that we're going to be dealing with space. You know, First, we need to locate objects in space. And you often will do this with just the coordinates of that thing. Time, we locate them with time, right? If somebody tells you, hey, I'm going to give you a million dollars, your first question should be when. Because if that million dollars is coming 100 years after you're dead, it ain't going to do you any good, right? In the same way, time is important because the time rate of chance of things or time is important in understanding motion, how we have something here, we have it there at these different times. Therefore, we can start understanding the motion, the velocity, acceleration of the body, okay? Mass. Mass is a quantity that is like a resistance to change. You probably have some friends that seem to have a lot of mass because no matter what they, whatever happens, they never move. They still are rigid in their opinion, right? Uh, they got a lot of mass up there. Well, materials are people too. And when they have, the more mass they have, the more resistant they are to change. You can test this out by taking, uh, oh, let's take a uh, trash can fill it up with, uh, just have a trash can sitting there that's empty and run and run into that thing as hard as you can. And you're going to find you might injure yourself slightly, but mostly that trash can is going to go flying. But if you now fill that trash can with concrete, then you go running into that trash can. It's got a lot more mass now, and you're going to be the one that takes all the damage, and that thing is likely to not move. The more mass it has, the more resistance it has to change. This is one of the reasons they get big linemen and not little skinny linemen, because a bigger guy is going to be hard to move, even without considering his muscle. Okay. Uh, so when we start talking about mass, we can look at uh, the effects of of uh, forces, translational forces on mass. When we get to dynamics. We'll be looking at also at uh, rotational ones um, and also gravitational forces. We'll look at that a little bit. Okay, um, so we're going to be studying force. I've actually decided to pull off most of the force stuff in a separate sub video. But basically, a force it's a vector and it re represents the action of one body on another. It's characterized by a point of application and a magnitude and a direction, right? That's a vector, and that's what a force is. And we represent it with a vector. Like I said, we'll talk about that in another sub-video as part of this lecture one, okay? We're going to look at a couple different ways to look at this also, kind of like we looked at statics and then dynamics, rigid bodies and deformal bodies, or we talked about those. A particle is if we have something and it actually can behave as if it was just a little point in space. So no matter how much mass, we can just shrink that down and say all that mass is in this one little spot. We're going to find out when we treat things like particles, they get much easier to analyze than if we treat them as a rigid body where it actually has other things that can be going on, right? So the idea of a particle, once again, um, there are things that are actually more particle-like and things that are more rigid body-like, but we can basically take anything, including whole galaxies, and treat them like a particle for certain kinds of analysis. And then, and our numbers will be valid for certain kinds of things and will be completely wrong for other kinds of things. We can then go and evaluate it as a rigid body for other kinds of analysis and get better and better numbers. Okay, so if we actually want to understand that idea, let's take a little quiz. We can say, okay, is this a particle or a rigid body? You would probably agree with me. Well, that looks like a particle. Okay, how about this guy? This is rotating about point O. That looks like a rigid body. Looks like the way that's shaped and the motion that's shown 
it probably will be a gross simplification that will not be valid at all if we try to treat that like a particle, right? Here's a little larger particle, still treated like a particle. This bug looks like a particle, right? We could say, oh, look, there's a bug moving across the wall. I can track his velocity, his trajectory, and pop him off with my BB gun or my uh, airsoft gun. However, if you were a little uh, bug, uh, bed bugs bug, a bug's bed bug, if you're a tiny little bug on his leg, then that bug would have to be treated as a rigid body rather than as a particle. This car, we think, well, that's a rigid body for sure, but actually you can do a lot of analysis just treating that like a particle before you start looking at it as a whole rigid body. Same thing with this rocket. We can do all of our orbital mechanics. The first cut at that should be treating that rocket as just a particle with a certain mass and a certain thrust. And then once we've evaluated that, then we can break it down and start looking closer at the rigid body dynamics and then on into the deformable body effects of the thing. Okay? So hopefully that gives you kind of a sneak preview of where we're headed for that. So we're going to deal with, uh, we can have um, a Newtonian system or a relativistic system. A Newtonian system is one where we have space, time, and mass. They're independent of each other. That means they're not affected by each other. You have space and you have time. And the space isn't changing with time. The things that grow in the space might change, but basically the space is unchanged. Time is ticking by. Mass is there. Forces are related to mass and the change in velocity. In a relativistic system, our time can vary with position and our mass might vary with velocity. Another word for this is magic. We're going to mostly be dealing with Newtonian systems for all our fundamental classes, all of our undergraduate work, okay? including statics. So that is a real quick sneak preview at the most fundamental ideas that we're going to be using in this statics class and study. You're going to want to watch. I've got a number of sub videos that are going to get other pieces of this first lecture to make sure you're armed with everything you need to embark on this journey. Enjoy.